Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Susie and today we are making some delicious homemade yogurt. For this recipe, you're going to need an Instant Pot. So if you haven't used your Instant Pot in a while and it's been sitting and collecting dust, now is a good time to dust off the dust for us to make some delicious homemade yogurt that you can have for yourself and your family. We're also going to need Fairlife Ultra Filtered Milk. Some yogurt recipes require you to heat up the milk to a certain temperature and then let it cool before you can start the fermentation process. But if you use the Fairlife Ultra Filtered Milk, you can go ahead and skip that step because it's already been done for us. And last but not the least, you're going to need your yogurt culture or starter. We definitely cannot make yogurt without this. For this, I'd recommend using your favorite yogurt so you can keep that flavor that you like. I like to use Faya yogurt because I like the flavor and the texture and consistency. They didn't have it at the grocery store I went to, so I'm using the Wee yogurt instead. A couple of things to note, and this is definitely optional, because I make a lot of savory dishes with my Instant Pot. When I'm making yogurt, I don't use the same container that I use to cook my chicken and beef because I don't want my yogurt to have a savory flavor. So I usually switch out my meat pot for one that I use just for yogurt, and this one is much cleaner and hasn't been used for anything apart from yogurt. I also like to use this see-through glass dish so I can keep track of what my yogurt is doing. If for some reason I need to use the regular lid, go ahead and swap out this O-ring because this one has a lot of savory flavor. So this one, again, would only be used for desserts or yogurt. If you wanna use the Instant Pot Kit you already have, I recommend adding a couple cups of water and let it cook at a high pressure for about 20 minutes to help sterilize your Instant Pot and help get rid of any smells. All right, so now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and start making yogurt. I like to start making yogurt in the morning, so it has about six to eight hours to ferment, and then I can put it in the fridge and let it cool down, and then the next morning, I have some delicious homemade yogurt. To make the yogurt, all you have to do is transfer the milk and the yogurt to your Instant Pot Give it a good whisk, put the lid on, and set your Instant Pot to the yogurt function. Set it to about six to eight hours. At six hours, your yogurt will be less tangy, and at eight hours, it's a little bit more tangy or sour and has more flavor. So you can play with the times, decide what time gives you the flavor you prefer. The Instant Pot yogurt function sets the temperature to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the bacteria we added to the milk starts to break down the lactose sugar in the milk into lactose acid. And over time, the lactic acid causes the protein in the milk to coagulate, which gives yogurt that creamy consistency. After six to eight hours, your milk should now be really thick, and this is our delicious yogurt. If you don't like your yogurt thick, you can leave it like this and transfer it into your container of choice. If you like your yogurt really thick, i.e. Greek yogurt, you can go ahead and string your yogurt. And I recently bought this yogurt strainer to help give me really thick yogurt. Transfer the yogurt into the strainer and let it sit for about 3 to 18 hours, depending on how thick you like your yogurt to be. This is what my yogurt is looking like after letting it sit in the fridge overnight. It is very thick. <laughs> if your yogurt is too thick, you can go ahead and transfer the whey, which is a liquid released by the yogurt, back to yogurt to give you a thinner consistency. I meal prep, so I'm going to go ahead and transfer the yogurt into single serve containers. So that way when I want some yogurt, I can just open up the fridge and it's ready for me to go. I also saved this wee containers. I can use it to store my homemade yogurt. Instead of discarding the liquid, Go ahead and save it in the fridge so you can use it as a substitute for milk or water when making bread. Mm -hmm. 
I also recommend saving about two to four tablespoons of your homemade yogurt in the freezer so you can use as a starter next time you make yogurt so you never have to buy yogurt again. If you try out this recipe and you're not successful, a few things I would recommend checking is making sure you got the right milk. It should say ultra purified. I would make sure the yogurt you're using has live cultures or hasn't expired. I'd also check to make sure you're not using too little or too much yogurt. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.